In this video we're going to be talking about the workspace and we'll start off by installing the management console. Whilst the management console can be installed alongside or on top of the connection broker, in a large scale deployment it's worthwhile keeping it separate so that there is not additional strain put on the servers running the connection broker role. There are some prerequisites to installing any of the V workspace software. If these are not installed, then the software itself will in install the prerequisites. Personally, I install the .NET Framework 3.5 Service Pack 1 by hand, and then leave the installer to install everything else. So let's go to the lab and let's get started. And here we are in the lab. I have a server. I have named my server V Work Management 1, given it a fixed IP address all the usual things and I have downloaded the software and I've placed it into a folder called software support and here we are V workspace 8.0 um, maintenance release 1 for a 68 bit version so to start the setup we could um, run the auto run application and that would take us into setup and you can just go away and install and if we run the installer after getting many many boxes then you'll notice that the prerequisites are missing yes so what we'll do is come out of there now just for now and we'll talk about running the setup with a command line here we see the standard command line used for setup.exe with v workspace uh, slash s for a silent install and then passing through some commands to the wrapped msi that's contained in setup.exe so um, quiet with no reboot and then the add local command says which options you want to include in setup call must always be specified and if you're installing the connection broker role you must be specifying uh, database options the database options are shown here. You can either set up a new database, option number two, or you can connect to an existing SQL server. Today, for, the, for this video, we'll be setting up a new database, and in subsequent videos, we'll be connecting to that pre-configured database. When connecting to a database, you have to supply these values, the SQL server name, SA username and password in order to create the user account that will be used by vWorkspace and a user account for vWorkspace to use. Generally speaking, allow the setup to create the vWorkspace SQL account. Do notice that as we're using SA, then you must be running SQL in mixed mode authentication, not in Windows authentication. Here we see a sample command line. First one just installs web access role only. Notice that you must install core and the web access role. If you want to install, say, the management console and terminal server roles on the same machine, then we see the next command line that clearly shows core, connection broker, CB, management console as well. So whilst it says terminal server role, it's connection broker. DB option equals one means that the database already exists. Hence, we don't have to specify SA because we're not creating the account or the database. Note that when we're putting this command in, note the use of the backslash to ignore the next character. We do that when spaces are in one of the names. If you're not using spaces, you don't particularly need to use the backslash. So back to the lab and let's run through the install. And here we are back in the lab and for ease of install, I'm just going to manually run the setup. So I've copied the files across already onto my C drive. So if we go to C, support, software, software, quest, workspace and run the auto run and so we'll just quickly run through the install as you can see it will remind me that I need to install the prerequisites so I'll do that now and say that's fine the standard click through windows two types of install simple installed everything on one box ideal for an evaluation or a POC as they say or advanced so we're going through the advanced installation today and today we will just install the management console so we'll install that on the local hard drive 
and I would like to create a new database on existing SQL Server. So my data source name I will call v workspace hyphen database because I don't like spaces. My server is called SQL1 and I am in a domain called example.com. If I could only spell the word example. We'll log on with uh, VSA password. Create a new database name called V Workspace Database. And the software will create a new account to be used for connecting to that database, which it by default it calls PN Admin. I will therefore give that a password, a nice secure password. One thing you will notice, as I've said, is that because you're using SA, you must be running SQL in mixed mode. So let's click on Next, and it will go away and install my prereqs for me, and I'll see you back here when that's finished. And here we are, and the software is finished installing. So we click on Finish. And Quest then invite us to apply any mandatory hot fixes or even ones where you have a choice over whether they go in or not for the optional hot fixes. So click on OK, it will take you to the hot fix download page. If you've registered the software, purchased the software, registered the software, you'll be able to download the optional and mandatory hot fixes and apply them to your installation. For now though, I'll just reboot and see you back when the server comes up. And here we are back on the management server, so we can double click on the icon and start the V Workspace software up. At which point we'll be invited to import our license. We can click on add license. Notice that I'm on the trial license for the purposes of this video, and so I get 10 enterprise licenses to use. Click on close, and our interface should open up. Because we're on a server, we'll add in these exceptions to Internet Explorer. We could take all of our protection off, but I don't feel that's generally a good idea on a server. So we'll enter our region, and so you don't particularly want to help them make the software better at this time. If you do, then that's good, because it'll improve for everyone. Then starts the quick start wizard that helps you deploy your solution. In the next video, we'll start to deploy remote desktop session hosts, followed by brokers and the web access. Hope to see you in the next video.